Hey, <laughs> and welcome back to another Corny Chronicles episode. For this one, we're gonna be talking about stuff I wish I knew when I was traveling Europe. The backpackers edition. So for the first tip here, your money. Make sure you look into what ABMs are free with your bank account. So ABM is an automated bank machine. I signed up and got an account with Tangerine and I found that there were thousands of bank locations in all across Europe that offered me free withdrawals. So again, I didn't have to pay 10, 15% of whatever I was taking out to the, to the bank machines and it helped me a ton. Of course, when you're traveling Europe, especially if you're there for more than a couple weeks, you don't want to be carrying around a huge lump sum of cash with you because that's just not safe. So this is a great alternative. That way you always have access to your cash no matter where you are. I do recommend that you check out the locations of these ABMs because it's not going to always be all of them. Remember when I was in... Ooh, I think I want to say the Netherlands I needed to take out money and I didn't have access to a lot of them there was only one or two locations and I was scrambling trying to get to them because I didn't plan in advance so just make sure you know what locations have a lot of them and then where you're not going to be able to access them tip number two so consider using solid beauty products Okay, this is not something that I thought of when I was going to Europe, but I wish I did. As you know, 100 milliliters, that's all you get for your carry-on size. I only brought carry-on luggage, so I was trying to fit my shampoo, my conditioner, lotion, all that stuff within that tiny plastic Ziploc bag that they allow you, and it did not work. I actually carried a full size of block, you know, like one of those like this size. And I got through most of the trip. Nobody really gave me any heck about it until the very end when I was in the UK, they were like, eh, eh, you can't go through, you gotta get rid of whatever doesn't fit in that. And I ended up losing more than half of my products. It totally sucks. So uh, on my last trip, I actually went to Lush and they recommended getting this massage bar, which just acts as like a solid body lotion. Uh, they recommended the shampoo and conditioner, actually even using these things called toothy tabs. So it's a replacement for your normal toothpaste and it's just a little tab and you can crush it up in your teeth and then brush your teeth like that. These products are really great try them out and see if you like them. I'm sure you could also get equivalent things on Amazon and wherever else you can find it in your drugstore and it's gonna save you the hassle of having to worry about the 100 milliliter rule if you are using a carry-on. Also, if you are gonna get this, make sure you get some plastic containers to put all of these in and you separate your shampoo and conditioner from your moisture bar because then you don't want them melding together or getting the same smell because it's just going to mess them up okay for the next one shoes i am such a diva you know i brought way too many pairs of shoes when i was going to europe i brought two pairs of runners i brought my flip-flops my sandals and my wedges Everything was all right. I really didn't need two pairs of running shoes, but that was fine. The wedges killed me. It was like having two fat bricks in my bag no matter where I went. And to make it even worse, I didn't use them once. When you're in Portugal and Spain, the floors are not like what we have here in Canada. They're not concrete. They're little um cobblestone so they're very slippery it's very hilly in a lot of places especially when we were in lisbon and i was slipping all over just in my normal sandals far less in my actual wedges i was not gonna wear them anywhere so unless you plan on doing a lot of clubbing and you're gonna use uber or lyft or cabify whatever and you're gonna go straight from place to place and you're not gonna be walking around i say yeah Take the, take the L, go for it, carry them. But if you're just planning on going to some bars, maybe going out once or twice, don't worry. Sandals are totally acceptable. It's not like some of the clubs that we have here. You can get in no problem and you're not gonna have to worry about breaking an ankle. <laughs> so international data plans. 
I definitely recommend getting a plan in advance of going and just to save yourself the hassle of having to figure it out when you're there. Back in the day, I did run into the problem when I was in Hong Kong. I got a plan there, but my phone was not unlocked. So it took a couple days for the process. My dad actually had to do it from Canada to unlock my phone over there. And it was hell because in those couple of days, of course, I was jet lagged and without any communication to anybody outside of being uh, in the school I was at. So it just caused me a lot of personal stress. You definitely don't want that if you're planning on going alone or even if you're just with another person, you always want to have that line of communication, especially being a female. Uh, it's, it's just really useful. My plan was 50, 60 bucks. It was with Virgin Mobile. I only really got like a gig of data and 100 or 150 minutes, but it was more than enough for me just to have that peace of mind in case I did need to get that late night cab or anything from the airport. I had access to whatever I needed. That being said, my next tip is definitely use Google Maps and download offline maps of all the cities that you plan on going to so you always have access to a map no matter what. This saved me and saved my data. It was the reason why I was able to come out of the trip and still have about uh, 50 or 60 um, megabytes left on there. Not a lot, but hey, something. And it was because I always had these maps. You can download them for as many days as you want and then they'll automatically delete after I put for 30 days, they were gone. So it wasn't always on my phone. And that way in a pinch, I always knew where I was going. Use a selfie stick. Okay, this is one thing. People are always like, oh, selfie stick, so lame, so cliche. There's a reason why everybody uses them. Don't feel ashamed, you're a tourist. And if you are a solo traveler, it is definitely necessary. If you're with another person, or even if you're with a group and you don't wanna force that one poor person to go and take a photo of all of the other people, use a selfie stick. They're totally extendable. You can get a great background shot and everybody in the photo. Also, use Snapchat memories. This is a great tip because you can actually save, well, it's gonna save all the information. So the date that you took it, the time, the place you were in, you can save it with those cute filters and it's gonna be a great snapshot into whatever you're doing that day. Also, the memories save on the cloud. So let's say something does happen to your phone, you lose it, you're always gonna have access to those photos through uh, your Snapchat account, which is really great. I also ended up exporting my all my Snapchat memories and I made a short iMovie video. And it's great just for uh, memories of everything that you did. Also, if your phone does not have a lot of space on it, uh, definitely consider getting a small camera or a GoPro or something to take with you. Unless you are a photography whiz and you wanna have that DSLR, for it, but if you're like me and you're <laughs> kind of photography inept with everything, just get a small vlogging camera, or GoPro, or if your phone has enough space, that may be good enough. Just to take photos, easily concealable, so you can bring it out with you at night, and you don't have to worry about having this huge DSLR on you that costs thousands of dollars that you gotta worry about all the time. Ask locals for food recommendations. That is the trick to eating well and eating cheap. When we were in Rome, we had an amazing Airbnb host and he recommended this place. It was called uh, Mazika, I believe. I'll link it down below. Most incredible Sicilian food you've ever tasted. Oh my goodness. And the only way you're gonna hear about all these great places is if you ask locals. Cause no matter how much you research, no matter how much you look up on Yelp, you're just not gonna know a place better than a local will know. So that way you can see a lot of hidden treasures. Also, if you can, depending on safety, of course, 
try staying outside of the actual tourist zone in favor of somewhere a little bit more authentic, a little bit more localized so that you can get a more authentic experience of the places that you're staying and also probably save a lot of money because again you're not in that highly populated area. That's how we ended up seeing a lot of these places. I remember we went to another place in Rome. It was called Alice Pizzeria. It was in the Jewish Quarter or near that area. They best pizza. Again, just staying outside of those um, hot spots will allow you to see all these hidden treasures just by walking around and seeing what's there too. Uh, so bring medication. <laughs> Unfortunately, I had to learn this the hard way, but make sure that you bring some sort of ibuprofen, some cold and sinus, uh, eat, you know, Pepto-Bismol with you so that when you need it, you don't have to go looking for it. I ran into the problem where I needed some meds and it was late at night. I couldn't read the bottle and the pharmacist wasn't able to communicate with me properly. So I did not know that it caused major drowsiness as a side effect. And I ended up almost passing out in the street because I was just so lethargic, so tired from taking the meds. And I had to be almost dragged back to the, to the Airbnb. So avoid all of that. Bring medication that you know and you're familiar with and you won't have to go through this problem. Next tip. Consider using face masks. So when you are traveling a lot, taking a lot of planes and trains and being in these cabins that are recycling air, your skin is going to suffer. My skin got really bumpy, really dry, and it was cracking a lot because uh, it was just, it, it, my skin reacts really sensitively to these uh, pressurized cabins. So to avoid that, to put a little bit of a barrier, I recommend getting an overnight face mask that has uh, hydration qualities in it. So you can put a barrier between the elements and your skin. For me, I use this one right here. So this is the Laneige uh, water sleeping mask. Amazing. It is a little bit more expensive. I did get a Sephora gift card to purchase this, but if you're not looking to break the bank, you can always get something equivalent, again, at Walmart, Target. Just make sure you're looking for something with hydration. Uh, and again, that's overnight, so you can leave it on your skin for longer than 15 minutes. Two things that also changed my life. The first thing is this little guy. It is a pack towel. It fits in this pouch here and it saved me from having to rely on towels at the Airbnb bees at hostels because you know sometimes they're clean sometimes you don't get a good vibe from it and you don't want to use it bring your own towel that's the best way this one it's antibacterial uh, which is of course important and it dries really quick because of the uh, because of what it's made out of I will link it down below for all of the info on that and it's really going to be a lifesaver because it's so much better to just use your own towel that you know is clean. Also, we use these little things. They were compressed towels as well when we were actually traveling and going through airports and we wanted to wash our face and just stay clean. We had these little towels that you just dab into water and they expand and it acts as a baby wipe. Again, it was just more convenient because it was a lot smaller than baby wipes so I could carry it in my pocket even. And it's just gonna help you stay fresh when you're traveling a lot. For my last thing. When you're traveling, you always wanna get lots of souvenirs. When you're backpacking, you're not gonna have a lot of space to carry a lot of stuff around. So my alternative to that was getting patches from everywhere that I went. So I tried to get a patch from every city. Sometimes I had to settle for a crest, like you can see in Portugal. I have the Barcelona flag there, one from Rome. I got one from Spain, from Madrid and Valencia, Holland, and some of my favorites, 
on the front, rep in Canada, Hong Kong, Camden Town even from there, Mexico. So this is just a great alternative to getting a bunch of random souvenirs, you know, bracelets, whatever. Uh, this way I get to actually bring this around with me whenever I'm just walking about. It's a great conversation starter and it's just great to always see where you've been. I like adding to it as well. Uh, for these, I know normally they say iron, and, iron them on or sew them on, but the iron wasn't strong enough for me and I'm not a terribly good sewer. So I actually used my straightening iron and that worked a lot better. Just be careful that you don't actually melt anything on the bag. You'll also notice for this style of bag, it's very similar to the Fial Raven bags. I believe that's the name of the bag. But those bags are $90, $100 and I wouldn't want to be sticking patches all over it. So I got a cheaper, cheaper equivalent at Canadian Tire. This one was made by Threads and it cost me just $30. So even if I want to move patches around and kind of play around with this bag, it's not going to break the bank. So these are my tips and things that I wish I knew when I was traveling through Europe. So I hope that you found this video useful and that you've learned some new things in this video to help you with your traveling. If you like this, if it's helpful, please like it below, subscribe and comment. Tell me about your trips. I would love to hear them. Okay, that's all for this time. Bye guys.